In this presentation I'm just going to run through the magnitude frequency response of systems using plots. Um, just to run through the, what I've sketched out here, I, I, I have a system just shown as a block diagram uh, and the system has an input and an output and I have a couple of gr empty graphs plotted um, or empty axes with, which show, will show the frequency content of the input. So I'm going to run through a few examples and show the frequency content of the input and then show what happens to that signal when it's passed through by showing the frequency content of the output. But They're just empty at the moment. I'll fill them in using a few examples in a, in a few moments. Um, I've also shown another plot here. This is the frequency response of my system. Well, it's the magnitude frequency response. It doesn't show the phase. So we're just going to focus in on the magnitude response for the moment. Um, so similar to the frequency content of a signal, um, the frequency response of a system has a magnitude and frequency axis. Okay? So just interpreting this plot, um, it's a fairly rough sketch, but basically frequencies below 10 Hz will be amplified by 2. Now I'd have this label as Hz, it could be radians per second, but we're going to use Hz in this example. Uh, so the frequency axes are all Hz in these cases. Um, so frequencies below 10 Hz will be amplified by 2 or multiplied by 2 while frequencies above 10 Hz will be multiplied by 0 0.5 or halved. Okay. Um, now that's not exactly the case because we have this slow transition region here but roughly speaking frequencies below 10 Hz will be doubled and frequencies above 10 Hz will be halved. Okay. So let's just quickly run through a couple of examples. Um, just get the right colour pen and first example we'll use, we'll put in a frequency component at about 5 Hz and we'll say it has an amplitude of 20 and we have another frequency component about 25 Hz and we'll give it an amplitude of 40. So what we're interested in is how is this signal going to be modified. Um, well the 5 Hz component will be according to the frequency response of my system anything below 10 Hz will be doubled so my 5 Hz component will be brought up to a value of 40. And the important thing is that frequencies aren't changed by the system so if you have a sinusoid of a certain frequency going into the system the frequency of that sinusoid won't be altered only the magnitude or phase can be altered. Uh, in this case we're only showing how the magnitudes are going to be altered. Uh, now let's take a look at this 25 Hz component. The 25 Hz component, well because it's 25 Hz, it's above 10 Hz so it's going to be halved in amplitude. So it was 40, that'll be brought down to 20. There we go. So if this is the frequency content of the input to the system, then this will be the frequency content of the output according to this magnitude response here. Let's run through another couple of examples. So we will put in maybe a couple of sinusoids. Well, let's, let's put in four sinusoids. We'll make them all the same amplitude. So they're all of an amplitude of 20. So now we have four sinusoids going into our system or a signal that's made up of four sinusoids is going into the system. Uh, let's see how each one of those sinusoids will be altered. Well the lowest frequency component, it's below 10 Hz, it's going to be doubled. The next highest one will also be doubled, brought up to 40. These ones here, these two frequency components, they're both above 10 Hz, so they're going to be halved in amplitude. So if they were 20, they'll be brought down to being 10. So they're just a rough sketch of how the frequency content of the signal will be altered by the system in terms of amplitudes. Um, let's do another example. And I'll change the frequency response of the system this time as well. So we'll change the frequency response. The previous frequency response amplified low frequencies more than high frequencies. Let's change that about. Let's make it what's called a high pass filter. Let's 
reduce low frequencies and amplify higher frequencies. So the previous one would be described as a low pass filter. This filter here would be described as a high pass filter. But let's see how the system uh, would modify a particular input. So let's use um, let's use an example like this. Okay, so we have four frequency components going into the signal into the system again. So the input to the system is a signal that comprises of four sinusoids, um, like this. Two f two of the sinusoids are below 10 hertz, and two of the sinusoids are above 10 hertz. Looking at the magnitude response of my system, again, roughly, any signal below any sinusoid, sorry, below 10 hertz will be multiplied by 0 0.5. Well, any sinusoid above 10 Hz, well, their amplitudes will be multiplied by 2. So we have two frequency components which are going to be multiplied by 0 0.5. And let's sketch that in. So the 40 Hz component, or sorry, the lowest frequency component has an amplitude of 40. Well, that amplitude will be brought down to 20. This frequency component here looks like it's about 8 hertz or so. That'll be halved as well, that'll be brought down to 2. That first line isn't drawn very accurately, I've just brought them out a little bit. There we go. The next one will be 10. Um, these two frequency components, if they're passed through this system, and remember this is my new frequency response now, um, anything above 10 Hz will be amplified by 2, so both of those frequency components will be amplified by 2. It will be brought up to 40, and this one here, we'll say it looks like it's roughly 10, so that will be brought up to about 20. So, if these sinusoids are passed through this system, this is the frequency content of the output. So this, this is how this, the amplitudes of the sinusoids will be altered. Okay, I hope you get the general gist now of the magnitude response of a system. It isn't very complicated. Um, the reason why we're focused on sinusoids is because all signals can be made up of sinusoids. So if we know the frequency response of a system, which will be defined for all frequencies, well then we will know what the, what we'll be able to predict what the frequency content of the output of the system will be to any input.